All right, welcome back, everybody. So I am back from L.A., the concrete jungle, as I call it. Um, I had an absolute blast. Again, I want to thank Thomas Craven Wood Finishers, CIC, and Annex Paint for having me out to talk about product improvements and making their coatings better. So what I've done is I put together a little bit of a trailer like I always do on my trips with some epic music to get you all jacked up about uh, CIC coatings. And then you don't want to miss um, a message from Miles Woolley, their chemist. Um, he talks product improvements and then he also talks about the pluses and minuses of using a crosslinker versus a hardener in their products. So again, thank you guys. And I will catch you all on the flip side. Let's do it. about CIC is that they're willing to work with their customers and make their products better and so that's why I'm here was to show a couple things that I found um, that have, are a, sort of an issue when you're shooting with air assisted airless um, I know that's come up with like uh, bubbling or um, uh, what did we really kind of find out what it what it was are we still well, I think a lot with the high pressure systems, the airless, the air assist, airless, you get a lot of shear, so you got to build in a little bit more forgiveness, a little bit more, you know, air release. And uh, so we compared a couple of different products. Uh, I sent Eric a, a prototype sample, which has been a big improvement, and uh, we're debating on whether or not we're going to put that into our production uh, product. Uh, we also compared some single component, you know, polyurethanes. 
uh, that, did, that did really well where we noticed that uh, uh, due to that formulation or the type of things we have in it or just the uh, properties of that coating, we, that we did not get that effect. We couldn't really cause the shearing microphone from the single component urethane, which was good. I think everything we laid down there was just nice, slick. Uh, so we're, we're working on product improvement. Uh, Microphone with water-based coatings and high shear pumps is something I think is a universal problem. So we're just uh, we're doing a little adjustment. We put the pressure this way and that way. We shot probably what 40 pieces today. Uh, and, you know, learned a lot and uh, you know learned a lot about our other products. And uh, I really appreciate the feedback I get from guys like Eric. Uh, you don't want a yes man that tells you, man, we love everything about your coating. You know, don't don't change anything because if anybody knows anything about coatings knows that that's not right. You know, coatings are constantly being evolved, especially with the new technology. They come out with new things that water wasn't capable of doing just five years ago. Uh, so it's not going to be perfect when it comes to market, but guys like us and Eric, we spray and we add a little bit of this and a little bit of less than that. And then that's how products, you know, become ultimate or become better and, and become, uh, you know, something that people, you know, talk about and, you know, talk to other people about. So. Uh, I appreciate your input and I appreciate being here with, you know, Thomas Craven uh, finishing the guys at Annex, you know, put this together. They're one of our good distributors out here in Southern California. So you guys know you can get this stuff online. Uh, so we're just making the water-based interior product line better. Yeah. So a couple things I want to point out that we did today. So we shot the um, CIC water-based conversion coating and we're going to see if we can, uh, I'm going to be working with him going back and forth, see if we can get a little bit better vertical hang. Because I know a lot of guys out there want to get that four to five wet mills, and then we're going to work on the shearing issues. And he actually sent me one before I got here, and I shot that, and it came out really well. But we're going to try to push the needle a little bit more. But um, as I've talked to you guys about the Victoria's Secret Poly, as we've been calling it, that one um, is pretty much um, on par with what you're going to get with the Renner 855 or the Malaysi 1K. It's pretty much. Um, dead on uh, same product. So one of the cool things about it though is you can add a cross linker to it and you can add the hardener to it as well. And we also did um, some vertical hang and you're getting the exact same um, vertical hang as well with it. I think we shot it at 7 and it hung. We went to 10, maybe a little bit a little excessive. Run. 7 to 8 with no runs. Yeah. Uh, 9 to 10. Yeah. <laughs> we got a, a couple of trips on the floor. That, I don't think that's realistic, but we just wanted to see how far we could push it before it sags. I had a really good vertical hang and really good uh, really good wood warmth and uh, clarity. The biggest thing that we get feedback, I think, across the line, whether it's our single component urethane, our conversion coating, or our floor poly, is it looks like lacquer. It doesn't look like water-based. It doesn't look milky. Uh, our flats are still we're very optical, translucent. We don't we don't get the milky haze even on dark colors. Uh, uh, but the most impressive thing I thought today was how quickly the one component Victoria's Secret, yeah. poly dried, <laughs> and it hung, and you know, two coats of that on oak, and uh, what was the other stuff? Wal walnut. Walnut yeah. today just looked spectacular. So. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and you're going to get that same hand and feel that you will with the Renner and the Lacey. So, I think that's good. Uh, one couple things I do want to bring up real quick is I know a lot of people have questions about the cross-linker and hardener, and so I would just like for them to get a perspective from someone that creates coding, just kind of tell them what you're... Um, you know, what, what benefits are you going to get by using the crosslinker or the hardener? What's your thoughts on that? Well, I try to answer that easily. It's kind of a loaded <laughs> question. It all depends on what you're blending it with. You know, if you've got things with, you know, carboxyl or hydroxyl groups in them, like if you're using your acrylic resin, it's like our conversion coating has a little bit of reactivity. So you're going to get a bigger boost from the isocyanate hardener. You're also going to get some reaction from the water, and it's going to, but you're going to bring a, a different benefit to that than if you would put the hardener in something that didn't. It's going to benefit you both ways. The crosslinker, which is typically, you know, polyazeridine, it's what everybody uses. It's been around forever. Uh, that's a good product. It does, it boosts your uh, chemical resistance. It boosts your hardness. So, you know, your products that don't have a lot of reactivity that would react with the isocyanate tend to do better with the crosslinker. Ultimately, it comes down to preference. My personal opinion, which is only the opinion, is I think at the cost of the polyazeridine crosslinker, I don't know, depending on what you're looking for, it's a little tougher to get the value out of the added cost. 
I think it's a little better to justify that adding cost by putting the hardware. Because I think you get a little, you can put a larger percentage, you get a little more oomph out of it, a little more bang, and, uh, and it's just a uh, uh, cost of value, I think, is a little better. Okay. But it all depends on what you're doing. Some people have found with our products, they love the crosslinker and their, their specific application that works well, and other people have found the hardener. I would suggest that you do your own testing. Do some do ladders. Go from five percent to twenty percent, and in between, and on the you know crosslinker, go to one percent to you know three percent, and then you know spray panels. Come back a week later. Take your acetone. Take your coffee. Take your nickel test, and you know see what the benefits are. You can really take and expand these products uh, with these di two different additives, but you have to determine what works best for you. And, and like always, you always want to test, but you can really do some neat things. You can take the product out of the box if you think is really well, really good, and we've proven it does things. And man, you can take it to where it just hardly won't scratch. I, I saw the video where Eric took the, you know, conversion coating and went 10 to one with the urethane hardener and, uh, you know, had a hard time cutting it to do the cross aspect with yeah. the uh, razor blade. So that just tells you what you can do. But everything is system specific, species, woods, you know, specific, but these products have so much opportunity to do different things. You just have to discover what it is that you want to do. But I would say, you know, depending on what you're doing, both of those ads are, 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 will give you in different ways a significant improvement. You just have to decide what it is that you want to improve. Yeah. And yeah. So I think for me, I, I like, my preference is the cross linker because you can re cross link it. Um, life is not a factor. Right. That's, that's, so, that's a good, thanks yeah. for bringing that up. Yeah. The one, the, that's the big difference. When you put the hardener in, the clock starts. And when four or five hours goes by, no, no more. Right. With the crosslinker, uh, it, it just kind of dissipates after 24 hours and then you reactivate it with the activator the next day. You don't lose any material, so it is it is a balance there. That's, that, that's actually a really good point. That could be kind of, that could make up for some of the extra costs because sure. there's, there's really no waste with the crosslinker. Unless you plan it just right, you're typically going to have a little bit of waste with the two component here thing because when you don't shoot that day, it's not going to be good the next. So. Right. All right. Well, thanks for having me out, guys. And uh, I really appreciate it. And um, so what I'm going to do is um, Miles is going to be sending me some stuff with the um, conversion varnish. And then we're also going to be... Um, doing some stuff with the poly. I'm going to be showing you guys the Victoria's Secret poly. Um, I've got a stair job i got to finish up, and so you guys are going to see me shoot that, and then we're going to just do some testing on it, and then he's going to send me some of the flat, so we can do some testing on the flat sheens as well. So one thing I want also, Greg Saunders, come on over in here. We'd like to thank Greg from Annex Paint for having us out. What, what do you think about this? Well, first of all, thank you for coming out. This has been a project that we, we, we envisioned uh, numbers of months ago, and we finally pulled it off. Tomorrow we're going to have a uh, wood finishers hangout, which is going to be a lot of fun here at the Thomas Paving Studios. Um, I, I love the testing. I, learned, I always learn something when we spray things out. I, I, uh, I think I see new things, and I see things I can relate to my customers. So, and I get better educated, you know, and I love it. So, and Annex is uh, providing the materials. We have it locally, we have it in stock, and we're selling it online on www.annexpaint.com. All right, so one other thing that's going to happen, too, is um, it's going to be after the first year, Nestor? Yeah, we're going to get some. Um, we're going to be doing, um, well, I don't know if I'll be at all of them, but I think I'm going to be at some of them. Um, but some of the CIC suppliers, they're going to be doing college knowledge. And um, I'll be flying out for a couple of those, and I'll be there um, along with Miles and Nestor. And um, we're going to you know, show you guys a lot of these different things that we're learning and help you guys get better with your finishing. To wrap it up, I'd just like to thank um, Kremlin for supplying us the pump. Um, Thomas Craven for letting us use his booth all day, all day today. Um, also, Greg, Greg and everyone at Annex, and then also CIC for um, having me out. So... We'll catch you guys next time, and remember, tests don't get. It.